are in today. Uh, I was in a job and I'd uh, done a degree up in Birmingham and I did a postgrad following that at Westminster University. But there was a moment where I had uh, a real shake in my confidence and I was at work and really grappling with what I wanted to do with my life. I joined a company um, that I had taken a placement on whilst I was at university and I was just in the wrong place. So, and my confidence was really low and I was in a, an account manager's role where it should have been really, really high. And so those two things just didn't marry up. So about 60 years ago, I took this massive leap of faith and just decided to leave my job and go back to university. All of my friends said I was absolutely crazy. They didn't understand it. And, and as Hayden said, I did um, my CPE and they were like, no one needs another legally blonde in this world. What are you doing? And it was a real leap of faith uh, when I look back on it. I didn't realise it at the time, but I decided that I wanted to shape my life in a different way. And all my friends, while they were going into their careers and settling down and starting to rent nice flats and all this kind of thing. I went back into my student digs and off I went back to university. And that leap of faith was a huge point in my life where it was felt a very make and break point of my life. So off I went back to university. So I really can feel and empathize with where you guys are today. Um, I just want you to know as we walk through this that I want you to be thinking about these types of decisions that you're making in your daily life every single day because it's going to contribute to what we're going to talk about towards the end of our, our time today. There we go. So I want you to remember these these three people. This has been should be slightly updated because we're now four. But the gentleman on the right is my husband. His name is Rupert. And the little one on my lap is Chloe. And she's my daughter. She's now she'll be four in January. Now, these two people, I want you to lock in and just remember them because these guys are my anchors. And I'll come back to this point later in our time today. A bit more just to frame as to my background um, and as how I got here. Well, I've worked with um, a number of companies in my capacity as CEO of the Enterprise Vault. Uh, John Lewis, we've worked with Prince's Trust. Um, there are many, many more, but there's just a few on there that uh, we've worked with over the years. Now, this is my company is something that I've built up over a period of time and actually it has grown as my confidence has grown, which has been incredibly interesting to, to kind of watch that unfold. I'm also an MD in a FTSE 100 company and uh, I work in banking. If you'd have said to me 10 years ago that I would end up being an, an MD in a FTSE 100 company, I, I think I'd have laughed at you. But I just want you to know, I don't say this to be braggy, but I want you to know that these skills that we're going to talk about today are so fundamentally important, not only to your work life, your school life, your development through university. These are fundamental life skills. You of adversity it will help you with resilience it will help you in your overarching happiness for life and that's a bold statement but confidence really is the foundation of pretty much everything that you are doing in your life when i wind back and i look back i just cannot believe where i've got to and it is these moments in your life that you make where you make those bold decisions and it crystallizes and you later think, oh my goodness, what have we achieved? These are the stepping stones that we're going to talk about today when we're talking about building confidence. And why is confidence so extraordinarily important? Katy Perry summed it up really nicely for me, because if you are presenting yourself with confidence, you can just about pull off 
anything. And I truly believe that that is the case. Confidence builds in yourself and it builds the trust and it builds around you and it helps you shape and helps you shape those conversations. So confidence is incredibly important. I think Katy Perry is a very good example of that. Look how far she's come in her life. So what exactly is confidence? So confidence for me is an assurance, a firm belief. It's trust. And I said resilience. Now, isn't that an important word in today's world where we're working through COVID? Resilience is one of the most important things that we're going to talk about today. It's this inner conviction that you know that you can deliver something. Today, we've had a few technical hitches. I knew that even despite that, what I was going to deliver, and I knew with Hayden by my side that we could get through that adversity. And we did. And we could have panicked, but we decided not to. And we had confidence that we were going to get there. And we did. Trust and faith in a person or thing is incredibly important. Trust is one of the most fundamental things you can build in any network that you're working in. But with your friends at work, with your family, trust is a foundation. And we'll talk about a bit more about how you build that trust and faith as you are working through some of these tools that we're going to talk about. Fearlessness and boldness and courageousness, aren't they phenomenal words, all linked to confidence, but these things that you can really show, um, when you're being courageous, it tells me that you've got this inner confidence that's really unshakable. And it's this type of quality that really helps you through adversity. And the other thing to really keep in your mind as we're walking through this, and if you've got a notepad, I want you to write this down because this is the most fundamental piece. Look at this guy here on this slide. This is Tony Robbins and he is all about mindset. He is the mindset man and his philosophy is that you tell yourself a story for long enough, you will become it and that is absolutely fundamental. If you're telling yourself in the morning when you wake up, oh I'm dreading today, this is going to be a rubbish day, Oh, I've got so much stuff to do. You're already setting the scene for a very difficult day. If you wake up and you're telling yourself all the positive things that are going to happen in the day, and this is a very small thing that you can do to tweak in your daily routine. If you can think about some of the things that you're really grateful for and positive for, and something that's going to be so exciting about that day, no matter how small it is, these things will start triggering in your mind and it's building a positive mindset which will really help build confidence and I say that with true conviction because I do this every single day and it absolutely works. Telling your things the things that you're grateful for is an absolute antidote for feeling anxiety and anxiety, as we'll find out later, is one of the things that will kill your confidence. So please write that down. What you are telling yourself is eventually what you'll become. So if you're telling yourself you're and you're beating yourself up every day that you're maybe a couple of pounds overweight, then you will eventually get sucked into feeling worse and worse about that situation. If you're telling yourself you're a sexy thing and you're going to wake up and feel that every day, maybe you've got a bit of work to do losing those two pounds, but you're still going to feel very sexy. And that is really powerful. And you can use that in a number of different scenarios. So let's talk about success and confidence versus competence because the two are very much interlinked and in the world of personal development we talk about this confidence competence loop and how they build from one another now if you think about any situation that you that you go into you'll be able to relate to how you're feeling because when you're unprepared like going into an exam 
you are not going to have any confidence because the competence that ability for you to do something because you've got the skill set behind it it's not there and because they're so interlinked you need to have one and then the other builds and so even when you walk into that room of incredibly smart people that air that you know that you've got the skills you've got the competency to deliver something that always wins over smart do you know why because that ability to switch on the confidence knowing that you've got the capabilities behind you means that you're going to have an ability to speak out in that room full of people where it you might have the smartest people in that room but they definitely don't necessarily have the confidence in those skill sets and actually speaking up counts a lot more in the world of leadership being competent does confidence you know even the most incompetent people can be confident right let's look at donald trump um, and let's see, let's maybe not get drawn into the world of politics, but we can see that he is so confident in his delivery of just about anything that he can get a whole nation of people to believe that he can deliver. It's absolutely mind blowing the power behind walking into a room with confidence. And actually, uh, speaking of walking into a room, I mean, that that enormous power that he has when he walks in is all down to his body language and how he moves and how he presents himself. Speaking up in that room will count so much more because your voice is heard. And it is a result of that that you will then start to be able to shape the agenda. You'll then be able to start connecting with people in an entirely different way. And so therefore, if people are listening to you, success is going to correlate to that. So really fundamentally important that we build those two things together, build the skill sets and the competency to deliver and the confidence will come with it. So self-esteem, people often ask me about what, you know, what is the difference between confidence and self-esteem? And I think the the the, the quote that we've got on the slide here really sums it up quite well because they do link together we call them the confidence cousins because one works very closely with the other but it, it, the quote says outstanding leaders go out of their way to be self-esteem in personnel because if people believe in themselves it's amazing what they can accomplish because self-esteem is this real intrinsic feel, feeling uh, about you, how you feel about yourself. It's the type of speak that you talk to yourself every single day. I'm a valuable person. I feel good about myself. Now, if you're saying that to yourself, that tells me you've got high self-esteem. It's really important that piece that you're talking and how you're talking to yourself is really important for emotional well-being and particularly right now i think that is very relatable because we're spending a lot more time on our own we're listening to a lot more of the noise that's in our head and people are suffering a little bit as a result of that because the noise can get so overwhelming that you don't listen to the logical side of your brain which is really the driver the key to give you that confidence to give you the logical ability to think things through and to really bolster that feeling of emotional well-being so self-esteem is things like um, do i feel deserved and loved and accepted and do i evaluate myself in the world as being important those questions are fundamental to how you think feel and and how uh, established your self-esteem is now the reason why this quote is important is because we have all got a role to play when it comes to self-esteem and the people that do this really well are the people that are genuine about delivering and helping people with their self-esteem and we can all do that we can all change somebody's day by giving them a genuine compliment on 
uh, the way that they have walked into the room full of confidence or they've delivered something or maybe they've done something particularly amazing that day whatever that looks like we've all got a little bit of a responsibility to pass that forwards and actually it comes right back to you because that smile that you put on someone's face when you give them a compliment a genuine compliment about something is so addictive and even if it is a smile as you walk past someone on the street or a good morning we're not very good at this in london i realize but even those small things where you get a smile back the dopamine drops in to your into your mind and it gives you that buzz of feeling amazing and just a little bit of a smile on your face as well all of that goes into creating this really lovely warm feeling of strong self-esteem you give it and it comes right back and that's something we can all contribute to a small thing i want you to write that down if you've got a notepad put it on your to-do list for tomorrow to help build someone's self-esteem just a little compliment whatever that looks like whether it's your spouse or somebody in the street or somebody that you've just met i think that is a gift that we can all pass forwards to the world and it's so so simple. So this is really interesting because um, I, I, this is another question I get asked a lot. Is confidence a personality trait? Are you born with confidence? Well, let's test that question. How many of you popped out the womb with a ton of confidence and could then you know five years later walk into a room and start talking to people as a very confident self well DNA involved in confidence because there are some people that just have naturally a lot more confidence but typically confidence is something that you build over a period of time and it is a skill that you must master and practice it like a muscle and stress it every single day. Because confidence just means that you believe in yourself and you believe in your capabilities, like we talked about in terms of the confidence competence loop. Now, unshakable confidence, which is exactly where you want to be, is that sense of real certainty that we will make it happen regardless. And you can practice being confident and you can absolutely build it over a period of time. Now, confidence sometimes needs a bit of a push. And that is a good thing, because if you are pushing yourself and you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable, you are out of your comfort zone. And that is where the absolute gold dust happens. If you had said to me 10 years ago that I would be in a room of people full of board members talking to them and in a very authoritative way um, about Brexit. Now let's wind the clock back. We never thought that would have happened 10 years ago. But if you put yourself in those situations, I, I just wouldn't have told you that it was possible. But what I've managed to do is to build a group of skill sets that I can build on and build on and build on. And every time I get to that next level, I push myself a little bit harder into the new zone. I've done it today. I have done an incredible job on a presentation to a very senior stakeholder on the board um, of the company that I work for. And I was really nervous about it to start off with, but I knew I just had to do it because it has pushed me into that next level. And the competency I have built as a result of that is mind blowing because I now know that I can do it. And it wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be, but I just tipped myself that little bit further to actually get out there and do it. And at holy moly, I prepared. I prepared like I knew my material. And that is fundamental to helping you build that level of confidence so you can walk in to those virtual rooms as we're in now and really hold a strong, authoritative, confident conversation with someone, even at a completely different level. So that 
doesn't necessarily come easy. It takes a bit of hard work. It takes, as I say, a bit of risk. It takes you getting out of your comfort zone and thinking about things in a slightly different way. In this box that has a big question mark on the side of it is a video, which I'm so gutted I can't show you um, because this video, um, maybe it's in the other presentation, but this, this video is fabulous. I absolutely love it because uh, it really reminds, <laughs> not only is it a huge milestone uh, in, in my little daughter's life, but it also really demonstrates what I'm talking about in terms of how you build this muscle, this this memory. No, unfortunately, it, it so, must um, yes. I, I think basically, if you wanted to, you could share your screen. I think it's because you have um, you you use Mac and it's a keynote. It hasn't converted. Uh -huh. If you want to, you could do that or do it at the end um, just to okay. share your screen. Yeah. I'll do it at the end. How about that? And I'll, I'll try and pull that up for you because it is. Thanks, Hayden. It is a really lovely moment where you see this little person just get up and persistently keep going and going and going and going. And we somehow lose this ability to just keep going and be persistent and resilient and get through those failures. If you are failing at things, this is a good sign and this is so not intrinsic to the way that we think about things failure is a good thing because it shows that a you're acknowledging a situation and that acknowledgement and uh locking that into your to your brain is really important in terms of milestones but it also shows you and the world that you are willing to take risks and get out of your comfort zone Nothing magical happens. It's great for a while, but I guarantee you after a period of time, you will be looking and wanting that next thing. And if you're not going for it, it's where boredom lies. So failure, embrace it. This is where you learn the golden lessons of life. It's amazing. The other thing about this is that is really important um, and and going back to what we talked about in terms of self-esteem encouragement please do encourage each other get your arms around each other and help build one another's confidence if we are spending time knocking people down and gossiping about people and not supporting and and doing all those wonderful things that are really really intrinsic to us as human beings we're never going to get the best out of our communities because encouragement is one of the foundations that helps build confidence. In the video, you can hear my husband Rupert and I cheering on this little thing, and you can see her face responding to that encouragement. It's like when you run a marathon or a sprint and you have somebody shouting your name on the sideline. That's incredibly powerful incredibly powerful so encouragement is something that we can all pass forwards and give a little bit back to somebody else uh, particularly those people that, that you can see are struggling a bit more and, and need that little bit of encouragement everybody's at different levels and and everybody can really benefit from that level of encouragement so please do pass that forwards so if you are at home this is going to be a little bit interesting because I want you to stand up on your feet and I, I don't know if any of you are willing to share your cameras but what I want you to do is to get up on your feet and shake it out a bit and really think about these people in the slides um, because these people demonstrate exactly what the body languages that we need to think about in terms of building confidence. So these three individuals, if you imagine them on their proudest, proudest moment, they are standing tall and poised. Now, when we lived in the good old days and we, if we'd have been standing on the savannah, we'd have been looking out across all the our universe of things that we parade 
Um, but sometimes there will be those little beady eyes looking back at you, a bit like when you are doing presentations, usually, you know, when we're in a room of actual people live. Now, on the savannah in the, in the olden days, what would have happened is that you would have shrunk into a tiny ball and you would have gone very insular within yourself. Now, if you're standing up, you do this with me, as you, as you move your body language in, you can start to feel the adrenaline pumping from here because what you're doing is you're telling your body that it needs to protect itself and so the adrenaline starts pumping because it's getting ready for the fight or flight type of scenario. Now, if you're standing on your feet, opening your body language immediately stops some of the shaking that happens around here. Now, this can be used, these techniques, very small techniques, not only in public speaking, but when you're sitting down, if you're in a lecture and you need to respond to questions, all of these things are incredibly small things that you can do to help shake off some of those feelings, not feeling very confident. Opening the body language has an incredible, incredible response in your brain because you're telling yourself that you have got space and you have an environment that you can speak in openly and freely because as soon as you do this, as we say, you are pretty much lunch, you're telling yourself that you need to go into a defensive zone. So on your feet, opening up your body language, standing on the uh, flat on your feet, as opposed to sort of rocking around and having that real sturdy base can help enormously if you're public speaking. And if you are sitting in an environment where you're delivering it in a slightly different way, then you do slightly different thing. You keep your body language open and you would potentially put your hands on the desk to keep your hands from shaking if you're really nervous. But absolutely, ladies, particularly plant your feet on the floor and do not cross your legs because all of that, again, is the closed body language that does not help with confidence at all. Now, Tony Robbins, who we saw earlier in the um, in the slide deck, he talks a lot about how emotion, emotion creates emotion. Now, the reason he says this is because you build momentum within your body language and you build momentum within your movement. And that then helps you to project in an entirely different way. Now, just going back, hopefully you're still on your feet, just going back to our thought process about building, sort of closing yourself in. As soon as you do this, your, your throat becomes constricted and you really cannot get your voice out properly. So what happens is you immediately, even if you're not, if you're, if you're feeling quite confident, immediately your voice will start shaking, which tells the world that you're not confident, even if you are feeling confident. And it also doesn't allow you to, to project very well. And you can use this. I don't know if you've got kids at home or if you have a dog or you just want to practice on, on, a, um, on a sibling or a, or a parent. You can try some of these techniques. And just play around with it a little bit and have a little bit of fun and try moving your head up and projecting in a slightly different way. It feels so alien to start off with, but the use of your hands and the use of your chin and the way you project yourself has an incredible change in the perception of how people view you, but also in all of those intrinsic things that we talked about in terms of the hormones that drive some of these feelings around anxiousness. So check it out. Hopefully you've kind of got your energy back. Um, and thinking about, about Tony Robbins, if you're feeling we're getting a bit late, so if you're feeling a bit lethargic, do some uh, jumping jacks, whatever it is to get that energy back in the body. You really have to learn how to build the energy, put the gas in the tank, because when you do that, you generate more energy. 
and that then really comes through in pretty much anything that you're doing but particularly when you are trying to build confidence in a very difficult space so we've covered a lot there drop some questions in the chat box if you want me to go back to that and talk about any of those tools or particularly the body language that we've just talked about so let me move on to the the next slide um, and i absolutely love this it's really sort of spot on in terms of how i think about life um, and it probably is a strange thing to say to a bunch of academics but i'm going to say it anyway because with confidence doing more and thinking less is absolutely where you need to be we talk about perfectionism now it's important to hold yourself to a high standard it absolutely is fundamental however perfectionism is also a form of procrastination and that is one of the confidence killers so you need to start trying to understand how and what you are going to do to build that courage to take action because what we want you to do is to get from the thinking about what I need to do into the doing because back to that confidence confidence loop, competence confidence loop once you start building the competencies and you're putting that into action it's like this force of momentum is behind you and the confidence comes with it it's incredibly powerful when those things all start to marry up and what happens then is when you get to that point is that you're no longer really thinking about actually taking the action you're in the doing so that's exactly where we want to get you and it's about letting go some of that language chatter that's in your head and really not letting those doubts consume you it's about having courage at a really difficult time we talked a lot about getting out of your comfort zone but write that down and stick it somewhere where you will see it every single day because that i promise you is where the magic happens you've already done it you've already proven to yourself that you're capable of getting out of your comfort zone because you joined westminster university and you're taking a degree and you're pushing yourself every single day to be better so you're already there you just need to keep building on that upping your game getting to the next level getting out of your confidence so com comfort zone are all parts of the same philosophy and this helps you build resilience because once you're feeling confidence you have the unshakable view of yourself that even if you're in a difficult situation you can be resilient enough to get yourself out of it because pretty much everything is figure outable if you have the confidence and confidence then becomes the stuff that turns everything that we just talked about into actions and it turns our thoughts into judgments about what we're capable of and then it becomes a true fulfilling philosophy that you can do things and that is transformational so do more and think less very important in terms of building confidence so i love this one of my favorite slogans um, is just do it because it's again back to the philosophy of just getting it done jfdi um, i think sometimes what we tend to do is to really think about something in terms of perfectionism we, we use that almost as an unconscious excuse not to take the next step if you're really honest with yourself that is exactly what perfection is because if you're delaying you're not getting that product out into the world whatever that looks like and you fool yourself into thinking that's okay because i'm perfectionist and so i've got to have this absolutely right before it goes what it means is that you're trapped in this safety zone and you're not actually going to be taking the next steps which is going to get you to the next level which builds into the confidence competence loop this is when you get stuck and this is not where you want to be because this hesitation is an absolute killer and once you're in that space you'll find yourself doing strange things like 
um, maybe avoiding someone or not responding to the email or just delaying on something. And that really isn't very helpful because it slows you down ultimately. Breaking bad habits about, um, and I know it's a bad habit. If you're waking up every morning and you're telling yourself a whole bunch of negative chatter before you even get out of bed, that's a terrible habit that you have to stop. It's waiting, it is doubting, it is, you know, all the feelings that build up those insecurities and particularly worrying. We all worry. It's our brain's way of protecting us from what is about to come. Worry is something that your brain has built up a capacity to do because ultimately it's trying to keep you safe. However, worrying, if you think about it logically, really doesn't help. All it does is keep you in a place of self-doubt. And worrying is not healthy because quite often if you journal something down in terms of what you're worrying about, what you'll realise is actually you probably don't have control over all of the things that you're worrying about. If you are in that space, then I can help you working that down and breaking it down into bite-sized chunks so it's all actionable. And that's exactly where you want to be because it will change those worries and that self-doubt into something that is better because you're starting to take action, even if it's very, very small. Um, and then what happens is this magical ability to be able to use that momentum to get you through into that next level. Now, remember I told you to remember those two little people that, uh, that were at the start of the, the slide deck. So they're my husband and um, my little daughter, Chloe. Now, those two people are my absolute world. And I'm sure we all have those people in our life that um, you know mean an awful lot to us. Those people, when I'm in a difficult situation, are those people that I think about because it is bigger than me, what I'm trying to accomplish. I am trying to make my way in the world and, and get better and do things in a different way because I want to make the world that we live in a better place, not just for me, but for you guys and for my little people in my world. And they are my anchors. So if I'm ever in a really difficult situation, I really think about those two individuals and I know what I'm doing is for the greater good. And therefore, even the worst of situations can be really overcome because I use my anchor and I think about them and I help them push me into that next level. Because I know ultimately that if I get out of my comfort zone into the next level, who knows what will happen? Confidence will start to build and I will get to that next level, upping your game. And that requires you to take action and just JFD. Confidence killers are things like what we talked about. So thinking too much about things, dwelling on things, those terrible, terrible procrastinations that hold you back. Applying too much focus onto what other people think. I mean, goodness me, Instagram is absolutely terrible for that. Um, it is literally just a slew of people judging themselves against each other. And that is not going to be very helpful to you at all. So staying in your own lane and staying on what you're focused on, what other people think of you is up to them. Stay in your lane. Think about the successes that you are confident that you can that you can nail focus on those things put away the fear and the rejection and and that will enable you to take those risks that you need to take to be able to get to that next level and as i said at the beginning we were talking about failure and i focus on that quite a lot because i think particularly in our existing current days today there are a lot of people who are feeling like failures. There's enormous unemployment. There is um, people, you know, people losing jobs, losing businesses, not able to take the next step. However, as difficult as these things are, in every difficult situation, there is an opportunity. 
And if you can refocus that lens and switch it to where the opportunity lies, the world is your oyster. And that's where true entrepreneurs will go because they know that's where the opportunities lie. And sometimes they're hard spaces to be. But my goodness, turning those into an ability to, to really focus on where the opportunities can lie is a real skill that will get you so far in life. It's really, really quite powerful. So self-doubt, um, hesitating, hiding, being hypercritical, um, all of these things um, really do build into a feeling of helplessness. And we have all been there. Um, it's a very dangerous place to be for a long period of time for your mental health. Um, the things in, in the workplace, we see burnout um, particularly as a result of this, and um, particularly around people that are very hypercritical. Um, it, it really quickly leads into that feeling of, of helplessness. And these things, um, you know, if you are in that space, then always seek help, firstly. But if you're on the journey and you feel like you're on the cusp of it, it's likely that you can make small changes that will help you switch this very quickly. Body language is a huge part of self-doubt. If you're curling up in a ball, you're telling yourself that you are not feeling confident and it will start to literally drag you down. Bringing that energy back up and doing something that fills you with joy, that lights you up, whether it's dancing, going for a run, you know, talking to a friend, but anything that opens up your body language is so fundamentally important. And um, for not only your, your mental health in terms of tackling some of those things around self-doubt, but also in your physical health as well, in the alignment of your body. They talk a lot about this in yoga and Pilates. Um, and they guide you through how you can talk to yourself in a better way, because that is really going to be a confidence drain on your life. Confidence boosting strategies. Ah, here she is again, Katy Perry. Look at that open body language. Love her. So fail fast. Entrepreneurs do this all the time. If you're in the tech space, they talk about this. They will produce a whole bunch of prototypes and they will use those prototypes, put them out in the market and they literally scattergun, see which one fix, fix the market and then they go with that strategy. They don't worry about the eight other ideas that failed. They focus on the two that are successful. And that is something that you can easily bring into your life try something different every day might be ambitious but set yourself a goal whatever that looks like maybe it's once a week or once a month but trying something accepting that you might fail from it and moving on quickly will help build resilience and it'll also massively help in terms of building your confidence because you'll figure out for yourself that everything is really figure outable We've talked about don't wasting your time being a perfectionist. Perfectionist is often just hiding behind whatever it is getting it out there in the world. Becoming a perfectionist only leads to um, procrastination. So really think about getting out that product, whatever it looks like, the essay that you need to write, get it done but make sure you do the right iterations of it, but don't keep going back and back and back. Because when you look back at that piece of work, you will often find that the 10 extra hours that you spent on it only moved you a small bit. You'd have moved on onto the next thing. You could have maybe have accomplished a much bigger thing if you think about that over an accumulative period of time. Stop listening to that self-talk. If there's, if there's one thing that you should take away from our, our time today is to really get control of what you're telling yourself. Because we all slip into this at times, particularly in the moment where we're spending a lot of time potentially on our own or isolated from friends and family. Self-talk is going to be 
the difference between you failing and succeeding because what you're telling yourself drops into your subconscious and you ultimately over a period of time will just become exactly what you're beating yourself up about what was that it sounds quite woo woo but you feel physically a lot lighter the fog lifts in your mind and you can become much clearer in terms of what you want to focus on moving from me to we really helps shift particularly if you're doing any kind of public speaking don't make it about you um, and, and your ego make it about what you're giving to the world that's a really good way of switching out the lens and easing some of that nervousness because no longer is the focus on you it's all about who you're delivering to get out of your comfort zone that's the second most important thing that you've got to take out of today is be prepared to take some risks out of your comfort zone lies the gold dust and it is so worthwhile getting there nothing magical happens in your comfort zone it all happens on the other side of that take some calculated risks don't do do, do anything crazy but speak to your friends and your family the ones that you know will support you through um, taking some of those risks and make calculated rational decisions around the risks that you're going to take and remember your anchors whoever those little people are in your life sometimes they're going to help you push through that adversity when you don't think you can do it for yourself you can absolutely always do it for somebody that's important in your life and the other thing that this will lead to is that ability to take action so feelings are natural your behaviors are down to you what you're feeling is really a natural generation of of things that are going on probably externally but how you respond to that is absolutely down to you and that is a choice it's Mel Rabbons it's one of my my favorite quotes and I really hope as we get to the end of our time today that we have some questions so I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it back over to you Hayden um, for some questions if we can do that thanks so much sarah um sorry i was getting caught up um in the chat uh, there's so much support going on uh, between the students and alumni guests we've got so lovely to see actually so um yeah okay. thanks so much that was so much um great uh, insight and advice and very personal as well so um yeah thanks so much so some colleagues have kindly been moderating and collecting some questions um from the chat so bear with me because there have been quite a few which is great um Amazing. so i think they my wonderful colleagues have put them into sort of subject categories so i will ap apologies in advance to any questions that we don't get to cover because there really are quite a lot coming in um but we'll start with more um general confidence mental health and character related questions so the first ones uh first one is what is the difference between confidence assertiveness and being aggressive oh good question and in my line of work i i think i see this a lot particularly at the moment um as, as people are under a lot of pressure um I mean this is this is a personal view um that there there can be a very fine line between confidence assertiveness and aggression I think that that one can sometimes bubble over into the other and I think that's such a good question because I think sometimes it's about perception and how the other people the other person's feeling as to whether they you know how they're feeling in that moment as to whether it's an aggressive conversation or not um, and sometimes that can be misinterpreted because the other person just thought they were being confident um, and that is often how you get disputes and grievances between people actually because there's a different level of perception but from my from my perspective all of that can be avoided by building that skill set around emotional intelligence because that ability to tune in to being empathetic to think about what other people are feeling stepping into their shoes can be a real game changer because 
you can then start to adapt your style so in some cases that level of confidence that you need to have a conversation in a in a, a room of c-suite level individuals as an example is exactly what you need but if you're talking to um, maybe some very junior people within the organization that are new if you go in with that level of assertiveness they're going to really perceive that as, as being quite probably quite aggressive um so it's it's about tuning in to knowing who your audience is and being empathetic to that and thoughtful and delivering to that and actually responding as you're reading the room because um people will in their body language tell you whether they're enjoying it or not it is a bit more difficult in today's environment because and this is why we're all so much more tired because trying to read people's behaviors through um, screens is quite challenging you have to work a lot harder um, whereas in a room it's a lot easier to just naturally pick up um, body language so it is more difficult in today's current climate as we're working from home but I think a lot of it has got to do with um, perception putting it in context and, and really reading the room Brilliant, thanks so much. Um, so let's see what next. Um, so how to deal, how would you deal with emotions um, and trying not to let them override and take over? There's a great book that you can read if you're experiencing this um, a lot. Um, and we all go through times where things bubble over and and actually emotions are very good thing. You know, emotion is what makes us feel alive. It makes us feel happy, sad. All of the great feelings that makes us a human being are really very important. So if you're experiencing a bit of overwhelm around this, read a book called The Chimp paradox because the chimp paradox is phenomenal it's one of the first books that i read um very long time ago when i was starting to get a lot more interested in psychology and trying to understand exactly why people do the things that they do and the chimp paradox in a very simple in a very simple summary basically um, outlines how the three centers of your brain work together and it's called the book's called the chimp paradox because he refers to the central emotional um, part of your brain as the chimp so at the front and back you have your logical thinking lobes but sometimes the chimp in the middle gets very overwhelmed because of generally what you're telling it because of the thoughts that you're feeding it um that it that it gets over excited or aggravated and it bubbles over and takes over the other aspects of your brain so it diminishes your ability to get into the logical thinking center of your brain which depending on the situation you know if you're in a, if you're in an emergency you want the emotional center because that's what's going to tell you to run but if you're in more of a, a professional setting you want the front of your brain a lot more in that logical logical uh, part so that book gives you some very good tips around how to switch from one to the other and actually how you can calm your chimp and how you can talk to yourself in such a way that you're not aggravating your chimp all it comes down to is about what you tell yourself and how you are putting a lens on situations that takes a bit of time and practice i might add and um that definitely doesn't come overnight but read the chimp paradox it's really quite powerful in terms of helping you manage those centers of your brain those different centers of your brain great thanks so much the chimp paradox so i had to uh, read read it myself i think um so let's see um ah here's a good one how can you overcome anxiety that prevents you from having success whether in social situations or at work oh well that's a great question because anxiety is you know can really hold you back because even in a social situation if you don't feel confident to walk into a room full of people um you might not be enjoying it quite as much as you possibly want to 
I'd always put the, the feeling of uh, context into the situation that you're going into and why you're putting yourself there in the first place. I think that's the most fundamentally important thing. Now, if you let's take an event, because if you've chosen to attend that event, there's a reason why you want to be there, whether it's to see your friends or to make new connections or whatever that opportunity is going to be that takes you to the next thing. That's what you want to focus on. And those feelings of elation, of meeting a new friend, then becomes a very natural thing to um, focus on as opposed to the anxiety that you're feeling. Now, so you're focusing on something slightly different. So you're not focusing on, oh my God, there's this room full of 80 people and, it's, and it feels crazy. You're focusing on the opportunity of meeting someone whilst you're in that room. It's an entirely different lens and gives your brain a very different message and will allow you to be a bit more confident and natural when you're in those situations. And the other part of this um, is just to practice it because those people that walk into a room full of people and i've got a very good friend of mine who does this he just sweeps around and he'll know the people that he wants to talk to for the rest of the evening i i'm probably the person that's still um talking to the first person i've met with a glass of wine in my hand because they're really interesting um and haven't sort of swept around the room but he's incredible and it's amazing and you can see him actually lighting up really enjoying that situation and I think that's really important is that, you you know, you can tell yourself that you're really nervous about something. And if you're telling yourself that you will become that, you'll become nervous. If you're telling yourself you're excited, well, that's an entirely different feeling. Um, but actually, your brain doesn't know the difference. Your brain does not know the difference between nervousness and excitement. So if you change the lens and you're telling yourself, I feel excited about something, you're going to enjoy it a lot more than you will if you're telling yourself you're nervous about it. Really, that's that's a good Tony Robbins philosophy to live by. And um, just so be really careful what you're telling yourself. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. So let's see what else have we got. Um, we've got a few on confidence while working. So. Um, bear with me it's a bit of a lengthy question let's see how do you not focus on what others think or see of you in the workplace as it's a space where you are constantly being judged for your actions and then added to that there's performance reviews for example put you into a box based on external perceptions of your work not necessary of what you can actually do so I, we're going through our performance reviews right now, so this is very, very topical. Um, feedback is is crucial. Um, I do think the way that we do it is quite um, corporate and sometimes can be a bit limiting because feedback is the most important thing that you can ever have in in uh, you know in, in a, an academic scenario. You know, when you get an essay back, you get feedback. You take that feedback, you make improvements. It's no different in the corporate world. You want that feedback so you can up level and get to the next game next level and the more high performer you are and the more high performers you have in the team the more feedback they're going to need now that is very difficult that's very different to somebody being either critical of you which is an entirely different thing because criticism isn't necessarily that helpful if it's not constructive it can be very destroying to people's confidence um and also the gossiping that goes on uh, and i i sense a little bit of that in the question so how can you not judge yourself against other people well that that's a choice that, that you can make and if you're in a zone where you are taking the gifts that you have and you are working on them and you're building on that every single day however small that is whether it's 10 15 minutes every day you're going to keep getting better and better and better and more and more confident because you're focusing on that and take those 15 minutes to focus on improving your skill sets or you can choose to take 15 minutes to listen to the gossiping which inevitably will lead to um, people probably not being very nice about each other destroying each other's confidence um, and actually is very very unproductive um, it's a choice and I think you 
limit the people in your network that are like that because it's not going to be very helpful in the long term and you build the network of people around you particularly in a corporate setting they're going to support you have your back you know give you that um sort of boost every now and again in terms of self-esteem and help you navigating to the next level those are the people that you want in your career and in your life generally um, and and those are the people that i would focus on lovely stuff um let's see we've got some more workplace ones ah oh, this is a good one so um I've changed career fields twice and want to change one more time as I have finally found my passion, but I feel I've lost the motivation and energy to change fields and start again. Do you have any tips to this extreme change as I will have to start from scratch and it's the biggest risk of all? The safety is comfortable, but I'm not happy where I am. There's quite a lot in that, so just let me know if you want me to repeat anything. Oh, this is very relatable for me. Um, actually very relatable um, and it's actually one of the reasons why I set my business up because I was I was very unhappy um, in a job that I was in at the time um, suffering a bit from cash flow as well if I'm honest so I, I needed to do a bit of both um, and, and had a real passion um, for helping people I think um, that if you take a step back from that situation that you're in <clears throat> and you really try and get down to the very basics of the purpose, why it is that you're doing what you are doing, why it is that you want to change that career, why it is that you want to set up that business and you get into the minutiae of how important it is to you and um, importantly why that is going to be the piece that will help you shake off the fear that you're feeling because without having a bit of a further conversation with you it's going to be difficult to establish that but it sounds to me that you're probably suffering from a bit of fear that's coming through and that is a motivation sapper because it makes you just feel a bit low and a bit helpless because you ultimately want x and, and you're sort of going off in a slightly different direction. So get back to the basics, strip back and understand the why it is that you want to do that and then build it from there. And I promise you, you will feel and start to be able to do and act in a very different way that will help you build towards that. Um, I mean, you can drop me um, an email if you'd like. Um, Hayden, you can share, share my email address um, if you want to, because that that's definitely a question that um, I'd love to help you further with, because I think that it, it will be small things that you can do that will really help shape your you, your thought processes in an entirely different way and give you that confidence to go off take the risk take that risk and go and do it brilliant and i will share um your email address that's really kind thanks um so i think there have been quite a few questions um asking for it to be honest uh, so let's have a look are you okay for time, Sarah? Because we've got so many yeah. questions. I could ask some more on um, on work um, and then we can move on to some some others and we'll wrap up by eight for sure. So let's see. Um, okay, so how would you recommend I stop comparing my work with other people's as I end up not liking it anymore? How can I generally build up my confidence in my own work? That's definitely a choice. So choosing not to compare yourself or your work to other people's is a difficult thing sometimes because I think we all get sucked into trying to look at something else, compare ourselves to it. Am I doing the right thing? Maybe you're not experiencing the success that you want at that moment. And so you start searching for other people that you think are successful in that space. But, but, but actually, in anything that you're doing, you know, selling a product or, you know, you're selling a service or, you know, you're just even trying to establish yourself. Being your authentic self is so much more powerful than, than trying to emulate anybody else or comparing yourself against anybody else because it's not the true value that you want to put out in the world. 
and ultimately you won't feel good about it because it's not yours and there's always going to be a, a bit of an imposter syndrome that will go into that if you are focusing on what other people are doing and not giving back the world everything that you've got within you which is incredible and the world needs to see that and so firstly make a choice whatever however the avenue whatever the avenue is that you're using to compare yourself against other people or, or other things then switch it off however you can do that and if it's not possible to switch it off then write yourself a note and stick it visibly somewhere where you you remind yourself every day not to compare yourself because that's really not very healthy it's not what the world wants to see and the, you'll attract a very different type of experience and people into your life if you are constantly looking at x and you want to be at y so really sort of think about those those different facets um and that and i think that will really help excellent thank you sarah so um i've got a couple now that are more generally about dealing with difficult situations and they're a little, little bit more personal um so thanks okay. so much to to all of you who have been so open and honest and sharing um quite difficult um subject matter and very personal things with me so if you bear with me sarah because it's quite um a lengthy one so um and then i can revisit the exact questions from it if needed but um so it's someone battling with debilitating adhd and dyspraxia um failure after failure as they describe and they've lost almost every job they've ever had and they've had high flying jobs but have lost most of them due to a neurodiverse issues such as those mentioned uh they also struggled all the way through school so people and circumstances put me down most of my life. How can someone like me develop the kind of confidence you're talking about? How should I feel myself with confidence when the learning difficulties have cost so much and caused so much loss? So of course, that's um, a very personal um, account. So thanks so much for, to the guests for sharing that. But um, yeah, of course, that might that, that could be its own session in, in itself. Um, but if, if you want to maybe just answer um, as much as you can in this context, um, Sarah. Yeah, thanks. Hey, and uh, so I, I I agree with you, Hayden. That's an incredibly powerful question, and thank you, thank you for, for being so honest and sharing that with us. Because I, I think what you're going through is a really difficult experience. Um, I think through life's adversity, there is always an opportunity. And it's, it's trying to find each element within that experience that you've had, whether it's good or bad, that, that it has driven you in a different direction. So I would take some time to reflect and sit with a journal and take a step back and maybe go through the jobs that you've lost over the period of time and think about what opportunity each one of those jobs have provided you whether it's you've met somebody that's turned a key that opens a new door for you somewhere else or whether it's enabled you to get some access to a training or perhaps it's that you've just done something a bit different or learned about a different culture now what you have within your portfolio of different companies that you've worked for is now a really good understanding of how let's say five companies work where someone else in your position may only have one and actually that brings with it some incredibly powerful experience that you can give to um, whether you decide to use that for yourself and channel it through a business or whether you decide to create something with it maybe you can take what you have experienced as real real difficulties and turn that into something you can use to help somebody else with um, but think about those experiences because i promise you in every single piece of adversity that you've experienced there is something that you can learn from it there's an opportunity in there that's taken you to the next thing and it's also something that somebody else will be experiencing that you can give back tenfold to somebody else to help them through it all of that will take some time and it will probably be quite difficult working through that because i imagine it's quite emotional 
um, particularly if you've been experiencing that from school. But some of the most incredible people in this lovely world of ours have got really, you know, severe learning difficulties and disabilities and they overcome that and they get through this adversity and they blossom into something quite incredible. And if you can get through those things, that is a massive confidence builder. If you can start giving that back to somebody else in a positive way to help them through it, oh my goodness, that is a game change. So out, um, most importantly, stop beating yourself up. Stop talking yourself in, is a, in a negative way. It's not going to help you. And then start thinking about that slightly different lens about what opportunities each of these different scenarios have given you. Hope that helps. Yeah, that was excellent. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, so sticking with the theme of um, more personal, slightly anecdotal questions. Um, so let's see. Um, so throughout my life, I have felt at some points discriminated against by my race, skin color, income or social status. I've often been undermined by others for my kindness and pushed over. This has led to a lot of low self-esteem and confidence in myself. How can I recover, regain self-confidence and believe it is possible to change? So the belief that it's possible to change starts with you. Um, and you can change the lens by telling you know, changing the, the words and the language that you're that you're using when you talk to yourself. So I think that's going to be the most fundamental thing that you can change immediately and you can get a hold of that. And that will start helping you because these worry beads just get bigger and bigger. Um, and the more energy you give them in terms of the time and focus, the, the bigger it gets. So that's something instantaneously choose to talk to yourself in a much nicer way. And it's, it sounds like such a simple thing, but it is a big thing. And if you look at any sort of mindfulness app, that's the starting point that they, they work with in terms of changing the focus, changing that sort of um, lens into something that is a, a bit more optimistic. And that, that will really help you. Now, I based my whole entire life on kindness and I invite people into my life and our family home that are kind and for me that is the most fundamental important facet of us all to build into our toolkit of things that you know we want to add to our lives for a number of reasons because being kind to yourself is where it starts when you're kind to yourself you change what you're telling yourself and actually all of that worry that you're experiencing that builds up starts to, to dissipate. So in terms of that piece, kindness is a phenomenal power. So if you're a kind person, please hold on to that and don't change because that gift that you have, you, you're passing that on and it's something that's built in within you. You just do it naturally and you're touching so many people's lives by doing that. And that's just mind blowing that you can do that and you're willing to gift that time, even though um, you've had some some difficult experiences around it. I, I do believe that there are people in the world that will take advantage of that. And it is trying to, to limit the people that are um in you know like that from from your world and once you identify those people move them out of your zone as quickly as possible is my advice um i know it's not always easy when you've got maybe family members but um you know certainly with friends and things where that's in your control then then absolutely get a control of that the kindness is is the most fundamental thing because that makes our world a much better place and haven't we seen that through COVID? Um, because we've all pulled together, you know, I see it on my street every day. I now know people that I've not known before and, you know, we're helping people in our streets. And that kindness is something that is, is very reciprocal. You give and it comes back. I don't know how it happens, but it does. And and please don't lose that because you've had some some bad experiences because it is fundamentally important if we could all pass on a little bit of kindness 
to somebody else in their day the cumulative effect of that is a much happier place so uh, i know I've sort of talked about that a lot but i'm i'm hugely 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 um you know part is really deep in my values that that's it's very important to me so thank you for sharing that and you sound like an incredible person yes thank you um to to our guests for sharing that and sarah that was a incredibly eloquently put and I think kindness does go such a long way um, and it's so easily forgotten. Um, so I'm conscious of time, we've only got three minutes um, before we need to wrap up. So firstly, before I ask the final question that's going to be relevant to quite a lot of um, people in the audience, um, there's lots of mentionings of books that you would recommend, Sarah, for various things, whether you would be happy to share your um, social media um, you know, accounts and everything like that. So I think we can probably catch up um, about that. And I could, if you're happy with those sorts of things, I can include yeah. in the follow-up email to everyone tomorrow, rather than try to list off books right now. So I think the final question I'll put to you is we avoided the dreaded pandemic, um, but we can't ignore it. Um, so let's see. I'm currently dealing with low self-esteem, lack of confidence and anxiety after graduating in August 2020. How do I deal with all this and still be hopeful uh, for a successful professional life during a time like this, i.e. a pandemic or lockdown? So that's a big question, but um, I think we'll probably have lots of recent graduates and graduates from 2020 as well mm. who were unfortunately facing this time um, in this mm. way. So yeah. So I, I empathise with anybody that's in that situation because it's incredibly difficult and it's incredibly worrying um, and there is high levels of unemployment and we know as we track into next year it's probably likely to increase and and this is where this is where kindness comes um, as a very important facet that will all bind us together because first of all find a group that will support you through that um, because they're going to help you in terms of lift you up, help you point in different direction to network, take to opportunities that maybe open doors for career possibilities and jobs. So getting yourself in the right environment and a support network I think for that is incredibly important and that will really help build confidence because you know you're not in it alone and <clears throat> I think when we've worried about things we, we quite often will focus on the fact that it's, it's us, just us that is happening to and actually particularly right now you know we know that there are millions of people that are really suffering and so um, I, I think that is the most fundamental thing. Get your support around you. There are lots of networks there that you can tap into. So to so do that, um, make sure that you're tracking towards the skill set that you need that enables you to get the foot into the door um, at wherever it is that you, you're looking at. So the skill set needs to marry up for them to want to engage with you and, and take the discussion to the to that next level. And the other thing I think um, on a number of levels is incredibly important is that you continue to start taking action and getting yourself into a rhythm and a routine every single day. It's really easy, I think, to slip into, um, you know, out of a rhythm um, and maybe out of a routine that is not necessarily going to be productive and help you um, in terms of the discipline of trying to reach out for new opportunities, get jobs, keep yourself fit and engaged, your mind firing, all of those things are really important. So having some structure around your day is really important and it's very easy to let that slip. And um, the other thing I would say is that, that even if um, you are sort of struggling with unemployment, everything that you can do in terms of a stretch whether it be um, volunteering or internships um, anything that will you know help you demonstrate that you are passionate and firing up and still looking for those opportunities 
um, is really, really important. Um, there's lots of different things. I've seen people pivoting in enormously different ways, actually, you know, setting up um, eBay accounts and selling things online, setting up Amazon accounts, all sorts of different things that you can do. Um, you might not know how to do them all, but you'll figure it out along the way. Don't be a perfectionist because that will hold you back. But if you can start taking the action, um, that's incredible because it, it really does kind of give you that energy boost that will help you. The momentum helps you get you through that next level. So really think about those things and, and definitely make sure you get your support network around you. I think particularly when you're feeling a bit isolated and um, a, bit, a bit worried about things, that's really important. The power, you know, of social media, I think, is absolutely incredible for things like this. You know, there are Facebook groups, um, you know, that, that can help you enormously, just um, point, pointing you in the right direction and helping you feel like, you know, that you're definitely not the only person out there experiencing that, which is really powerful. Super. That was um, invaluable, um, Sarah. So thank you so, so much. Um, I'm going to have to unfortunately wrap it up now um, because we have come just over eight o'clock. But once again, Sarah, huge, huge thank you. So